When I first started seriously thinking about making a YouTube channel back in 2018, I think, my first idea was to take certain movies, TV shows, or video games, and then look at some of the folklores, mythologies, or stories that those pieces of media might have been inspired by. One example of this is that I wanted to take a closer look at the crones, who are monsters that you encounter in the game The Witcher 3. They are believed to be inspired by Baba Yaga, who I have made a video on. In fact, the first ever video I posted on this channel was a deeper look at the lore in The Witcher and how it compared to the legend of Baba Yaga and beings like the Fates but at some point I changed my mind about what direction I wanted the channel to go in. So I removed that video, and I sadly no longer have it. So this video is getting back to the channel's roots in a way. Because we're going to look at a town that sort of served as inspiration for the game Silent Hill. Silent Hill is one of the most well-known horror franchises ever produced. But in case you're not familiar with the original game, Silent Hill was a horror game developed by Konami and released on the PlayStation in 1999. It has spawned several video game sequels and even movies. Personally, I don't really like horror games. But I do remember playing the original Silent Hill. And I kind of suspect that that game is the reason why I don't like horror games today. A short synopsis of the plot is that you play as this man called Harry Mason. He travels to the town of Silent Hill with his daughter. At some point she goes missing and the game then follows Harry as he tries to navigate this dense fog that covers Silent Hill to find his daughter. The fog is actually something that Silent Hill is famous for. The fog was a sneaky way of making sure that only the immediate area that was surrounding the player at any given moment needed to be rendered. There is a real-life counterpart to the fog-filled horror town of Silent Hill. And that town is Centralia, Pennsylvania. A town that today is pretty much a ghost town. The streets are abandoned. Most of the buildings that once stood there are gone, and there's smoke that wafts down the highways that are littered with graffiti. The cause of this is something that's still happening beneath the streets of Centralia. A mine fire that's been burning for over 50 years. Colonial agents would buy the land that makes up Centralia in 1749, but it wasn't until 1770 that the first settlers would arrive to survey and explore the land. This was during the construction of the Reading Road, which later would become Route 61, which is the main highway east into and south out of Centralia ownership of portions of the land would exchange hands a few times before a French sea captain named Stephen Gerard bought a third of it after he had learned that there was anthracite coal in the region. Then in 1842, Centralia's land was bought by the Locust Mountain Coal and Iron Company. A mining engineer by the name of Alexander Ray moved his family there and began planning a village. He laid out streets and lots for development and he would name the town Centerville. 
but the name would be changed to Centralia in 1865 because the U.S. post office already had a Centerville in another county. In 1854, the Mine Run Railroad was built to transport coal out of the valley and mining would begin in earnest with the first two mines opening in 1856. More and more mines would open and Centralia would soon become a bustling small town that was filled with shops, residents and, of course, the mines that fueled the town's economy. At its peak, the city of Centralia had seven churches, five hotels, 27 saloons, two theaters, a bank, a post office, 14 general and grocery stores, and a population of an estimated 2,761 people. But the town wasn't without its troubles. During the 1860s, the town was home to members of the Molly Maguires, a secret society that originated in Ireland and made its way to American coal mines along with Irish immigrants. The group was suspected to have committed a rash of violence within Centralia. The town's founder, Alexander Ray, would be slain in his buggy in October 1868, and it was believed that members of the Molly Maguires were behind it all, and three men would be convicted for this deed and hanged in March 1878. Given the fact that Centralia's main source of income was the coal mines, the town became a hotbed of Molly Maguire activity during the 1860s. And because of that, there are some who claim that the Mollies were framed by owners of the mines who were worried that the group would organize mine workers into unions. There's even a local legend that states that Father Daniel Ignatius McDermott, who was the first Roman Catholic priest to live in Centralia, would curse the land after he had been assaulted by three members of the Mollies in 1869. He allegedly said that there would be a day when the St. Ignatius Roman Catholic Church would be the only structure remaining in Centralia. Basically, by this point in time, there was a lot of activity in the town and beyond. In the early 1900s, the production of anthracite coal had reached its peak in Pennsylvania. But it would decline when many of the young miners from Centralia would enlist in the military when the U.S. entered World War I in 1917. The town would face further problems after the Wall Street crash of 1929. One coal company had to close five of its mines, but this only caused an increase of bootleg miners, who continued mining in several of the mines that were idle. The techniques that they used for the mining would cause the collapse of many mines. The coal mining in Centralia would continue until the 1960s when most of the companies shut down. Bootleg mining, however, would continue until 1982. And reportedly, strip and open pit mining are still active in the area. The specific cause for the Centralia fire is debated, but one possible cause could have been that the fire started with an attempt to clean up the landfill. The story goes that in May 1962, five members of the Volunteer Fire Company were hired to clean up the town landfill, which was in an abandoned strip mine pit. One way of cleaning up a landfill is to set it on fire under controlled conditions. And this was something that the firefighters had done before. So they set the dump on fire and then let it burn for some time. But the fire wasn't fully extinguished. Another theory about the start of the fire says that it was started when a trash hauler 
dumped hot ash or coal discarded from coal burners into the open trash pit. Either way, the trash pit is said to be where the fire most likely got started, and it would spread through the maze of mines beneath the town through an unsealed opening in the pit. It wouldn't be long before a fire was raging in a coal seam beneath Centralia. The fire would spread to mine tunnels beneath the town streets, and unsafe levels of carbon monoxide would force the local mines to close. Several attempts to put out the fire would fail. The locals would become aware of the problem in 1979 when a gas station owner inserted a dipstick into one of his underground tanks to check the fuel level. When he withdrew the dipstick, it seemed very hot, so he decided to lower a thermometer into the tank on a string to check the temperature. The temperature of gasoline in the tank was 77.8 degrees Celsius or 172 degrees Fahrenheit. The ground beneath the city became hotter and hotter. Smoke would pour from sinkholes and basements that would become gas-filled. Houses would begin to tilt and there were even reported health problems among the residents. The fire would receive statewide attention in 1981 when a 12-year-old boy fell into a sinkhole that had opened beneath his feet in a backyard. Fortunately, his cousin was nearby and managed to pull him out of the sinkhole, saving his life. At the time this happened, the governor was visiting the town to assess the area. Hot steam was coming up from that sinkhole and when it was tested it contained a lethal level of carbon monoxide. Despite the evidence of the fire, the residents of Centralia couldn't agree on whether or not the fire actually posed a direct threat to the town. But at this point, the town of Centralia was pretty much doomed. Rather than making yet another attempt to put out the fire, US Congress decided to buy out the residents in 1983. And at that point, nearly all of the residents would accept the offer and relocate. The fire at Centralia is still burning to this day. In fact, the state's Department of Environmental Protection writes that if the fire was left unchecked, it could burn for another century. In 2020, the estimated population of Centralia was 11 people. Today, very few homes remain standing in the town. The majority of the abandoned buildings have been demolished and the ones left standing have been reclaimed by nature. For many people, Centralia is nothing but a forgotten ghost town. But for the few residents remaining in the town, it is home. 